Welcome, friends. Today we're gonna talk about those first 1,000 subs. First, I've got some advice for anyone starting a new channel. And then we'll celebrate this momentous occasion and document everyone that subbed to the channel so far. I think it'll be really cool to be able to look back and see who was here first. Maybe we'll do another one of these when we hit the next milestone. So the first thing that I noticed about the YouTube algorithm is that short videos, which aren't shorts, basically don't get recommended to anyone that isn't already subbed to your channel. It seems like the longer the video is, the more that it gets recommended. But if a video is like hours and hours long, it can be very daunting to actually click on. There's even a handful of videos that I've got permanently in my own Watch Later playlist. They're just so long. But it's funny though, because people will actually watch an entire series of the same video in one sitting if you break it up into parts. But also, those longer videos can get recommended way more. And by doing it all in one long video, you also get all of the engagement on a single video. I feel like if you're a bigger channel, breaking a longer video into parts is better. It also allows you to upload all of the parts episodically, which will allow you to have a more regular upload schedule. And then you can still also drop them all together in one long video after all the parts are out. But you almost shoot yourself in the foot by doing both because the big video won't get engagement by the people who already watched any of the parts. And they either won't click on it, or if they do, when they finally realize that they've already seen it, they'll click off. And that will give it a low watch time. And because it will get recommended to people that watch the video parts first, the long video could be dead in the water almost immediately. So the way the algorithm recommends videos is that first it shows it to a small test audience, and then, if enough people out of that test group watch it, then it shows it to another slightly larger group, and so on and so on, until it doesn't reach the next threshold. It also shows it to your subscribers and other people that have watched your videos first. And then if you're gonna drop a video that's really different from your regular content, you can choose to have it not recommended to your subscribers if you think that they won't watch it. But it'll still probably get recommended to them anyway if they watch a lot of your videos. And it will also get recommended to the people that watch your videos but don't subscribe. Also, videos that you upload, which are just very different from your usual content, can often just die in the algorithm right away because it's being shown to the wrong people. Which is also why you have to tag your videos correctly. And less is even sometimes more. Because if you put really unrelated tags in your video, like Fortnite, then it will actually get recommended to that audience and they probably won't watch it. You can kill your video right away by giving it the wrong tags. Just tag it exactly what it is, as specific as you can. Because you really want those first handful of people that it gets recommended to, to be exactly the target audience. So with your tags, just put exactly what's in the video, and then maybe some different ways to say the same stuff. So here's a video of mine that did really well, and I just tagged it exactly what it is with a few different ways to say some of the same tags. Like Super Nintendo as a tag, and then also its abbreviation. You get the idea. Now going back to video length, 23 minutes seems to be the sweet spot for getting recommended a lot, but also not being too long to scare people away. But videos shorter than that can still do really well. I wouldn't prioritize video length. I just make the video and let it be however long that it needs to be, because this video is only 8 minutes long, and it's still my most viewed one. It might have been the thumbnail that carried it. And everyone has their own approach to making thumbnails. And there's also definitely some highly effective tricks when it comes to drawing attention and getting clicks. If you want to learn more about that, I made a whole video about how to clickbait. But you also don't have to clickbait for a video to do well. Just make a thumbnail that represents the video in a way that would make you want to watch it. Some people don't even bother making a thumbnail and just use a shot from the video. And that works really well depending on what your channel is about. Like if people are here to see you, put you on the thumbnail. If they're here to see memes, put memes on the thumbnail. If you're doing a video about a game, then put the game on there. I like to spice it up a little bit. Get in Photoshop or something and make a thumbnail that says this is a quality video. If you're gonna do like a really long video essay type thing, 
Make a thumbnail that says, this is a whole production. It's movie night. And if you don't have Photoshop, GIMP is free and it's fantastic. So thumbnails don't have to be any particular way. But I think it's really good to develop some kind of consistent style for them so that people can recognize your videos just from the thumbnail. I can't imagine most people are reading all the video titles. They just see the thumbnails and be like, oh, it's that guy. Oh, a new so-and-so video. Also, the name of your video is like its biggest and most heavily weighed tag. If you're doing a tutorial or informative type video, then try to make the title a question that someone might actually type in the search bar. Some people sort of put two names in the title, like put a short name first and then put a question behind it. There's a lot of advice and tools out there for search engine optimization, but you have to take it with a grain of salt. Unless you're in the business of making clickbait videos, that stuff hardly really makes a difference anyway. And ultimately, what you're really trying to do is to sell a product, which is your video. So just market it appropriately with a thumbnail and a title to match the audience that you're trying to serve. But if you made a really good video that got basically no views, you could make a new thumbnail and re-upload it with a different name. I would wait until it's for sure not getting any more views before doing that. Or if it did kind of well, but you don't want to lose the engagement, just change the name in the thumbnail without taking it down. And maybe some of those people who it's getting recommended to that haven't watched it yet will now. When it comes to reaching those first 1,000 subs, you could get it in your first video, or it might not happen till after you've made 100 videos. For me, I was just short of 70 videos when I got there. But honestly, the vast majority of those subs came out of the same three videos. If you're gonna upload every day, you should do that if the type of content that you make is sustainable to do so. But like for me, I make highly edited videos and it takes a long time to put one of those together. And if you're in that boat, rather than trying to make a video every day, just try to make one really high quality video at a time. And your first few videos might just not go anywhere at all in the algorithm. I had a lot of videos barely get 30 views, and then an occasional video that would get two or 4,000. A really good sign is if a video gets more views than you have subs, because then you know that people like it and it's actually doing well in the algorithm. And then something that you can do to help get more subs is to make that watermark you put on your videos some kind of a reminder to subscribe. If you haven't made a watermark yet, just go to customization, then branding, and it's right here. You could draw something, but you could also just put subscribe in bold letters. It doesn't have to be fancy. You could also put a reminder to subscribe in the description of your videos, and then you could also put a reminder somewhere in the video itself. I like to put it up there at the end with a card for another video to watch, but you could even just tell people to subscribe somewhere in the video. And here's a neat trick. Open your channel details and grab this link to your channel, and then you could paste that in a notepad and then add this to it. Question mark, sub, underscore, confirmation equals one. And now you've created a link that if anyone clicks it, it will ask them to subscribe. And that's really handy to share on your socials. But you can also put it in the description of your videos, or even in your channel details. I would also say, don't worry too much about trying to fit into a particular niche, but YouTube will probably place one on you anyway. And videos that miss your pre-existing subscribers won't go anywhere anyway. Which brings me to my plans for the future of this channel. This is sort of a variety channel that's mostly centered around retro video games, but there's a lot of one-off videos that I'll probably make just because I think they're fun ideas. But I think my main thing is going to be making video game documentary type stuff. I'll always be working on the next one and occasionally taking a break to make a short video. And I've also got a few different series going on that I'll rotate through. I really like doing awesome retro reviews. They're a good time. Review bomb videos are for those special occasions when we get one of those games that turn into one big pecking party. And then I'll make memes or meme compilation videos whenever I feel inspired. Those videos are hit or miss. I doubt any of that stuff will ever do well. I just make them because I think they're funny and I like to share it with my friends. And you can become a friend of the channel by joining me on Patreon. 
There's some different reward tiers, but pay what you want, because they're actually all the same. It's not about the money. It's basically free. And if you join me on there, you can also help me out and help me decide what makes the cut in the next video. I just did a video on cover arts, and you could have given me your favorite ones to talk about. But for real, if I could catch about 10 whales, then I could do this full time. But you can also pick the next review bomb or awesome retro review. I also can't wait to make my first Get Paid Shadow Legends video. We just reached our first thousand subs, so the channel is monetized now. But it's not hardly going to make any money for a really long time. It's all passion right now, for the sake of art and expression with the hopes of one day selling out. So for now, you all can enjoy me back before I was cool, back when I was still cool. Thank <laughs> you.